Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kendra and I like to paint with watercolors. Today, I am working on planning a painting before I start painting it. I've mentioned this before. Um, Shirley Trevena, who's one of my greatest um, um, and inspirations for watercolor, in her books, I'll show you her book right here, Breaking the Rules of Watercolor, she says that she always plans her paintings by making initial sketches, preparatory sketches, and then a more detailed second sketch. And then she carefully chooses her colors. And um, you know what? I have to admit, a lot of times when I start making a watercolor, I just want to drop the paint on the watercolor paper and see what happens. And sometimes I'm lucky um, but more times than not, it's sort of not a good composition and sometimes the colors don't play well with one another. So here I am trying out something new using my just colored pencils and making a lot of different sketches. Now you can see the one that I chose to make a second sketch now with some paints but in the same sketchbook. And then down to the right, you can see um, the man standing in the snow, which is all colored with colors. That's a, it's taken from a really old photograph from my great aunt of a man that I don't even know who he is, but I liked the image. And so a long time ago, I drew that and put it there and I didn't know what to do with the snow. So this time I chose my colors and put them on the rest of that paper. And so I have my colors chosen, and now I'm trying to be um, very thoughtful about how I'm putting together the composition. Now this place that I've drawn, it's called Indian Beach, and it's in Ecola State Park in Oregon. That's quite near Cannon Beach. We went there a couple of weeks ago for a couple nights and took a wonderful hike up, up through E. Cola State Park up to see the lighthouse. And, you know, interesting, E. Cola is a, um, a Chinook jargon word that is actually, it's, a, it's probably a derivation of a Chinook jargon word. Um, that maybe sounded more like E. coli. Anyway, it means whale because way back in 1806, when Captain William Clark was out here with his crew in the Corps of Discovery doing their, you know, famous um, Lewis and Clark expedition, he hiked over to this area because there was a beached whale right on this very beach and he was tired of the elk and the dogs that he was eating, and he wanted to get some whale blubber, which he did, which he did from the local, the local people who are called the, um, they're called the Clatsop, Clatsop Indians. So now I'm on my watercolor paper using a watercolor pencil. And this is sped up to two times speed because um, I draw very slowly, especially in the beginning. I love how the, the ground can meet the ocean in these forms that are like feet. And in fact, it isn't actually like that in Indian Beach, but I saw it like that um, up up by Nia Bay, up actually way, way up at the northern, most northwestern part of the United States, of the contiguous United States. There's a place that the Macaw Indians own, and I hiked up there this summer with my family. And anyway, up over there, there was this, where the beach meets the water it looks like gigantic feet so I incorporated that here so it's not totally true to Indian Beach 
in Ecola State Park, Oregon. So here I'm trying to mix, mix on the page, mix watercolors on the page as new gamboge, and I think it's a Prussian blue, and those play very well with each other. And pretty soon I'm gonna show you this new, very fantastic tool that you'll never believe. I, most of you probably don't even know what it is. You've never seen it before. It's a very magical, brand new watercolor tool. <laughs> Oh. One thing I love about living in Oregon is all of the place names that are native, like E. Cola, e. Cola State Park, which is not, as I said, truly a native word, but it comes from a native word that means whale. So we have at least some memory of the people who were here before. There's a river that's going down to the ocean in the same area. Ooh, there's my tool. Can anybody guess what it is? <laughs> I know you can't see it because my hand is on it. Let's get a good look at it again. Ah. <laughs> this is a thing that you break off of the printer cartridge when you're installing a new piece of of printer. I think this one was like a cyan blue into my HP printer. <laughs> and I just kept it and put it in my art supplies because I thought, hmm, maybe this could be useful somehow. Um, and there's my trusty old stick that I use all the time. But the printer cartridge thing has a nice wide edge and then I can turn it sideways to get a nice line. And it helps to blend the colors um, on the page and it makes those wonderful textural lines. So I think it's gonna become a regular rotation item in my watercolor supplies. I love it when I can find a supply that I didn't have to pay for directly. It's kind of a waste from another product. It's fantastic. Anyway, I was talking about native names. And so there's a river that you cross when you're going down to the ocean um, when you're driving on 26 from Portland to get to Cannon Beach, which is where is the closest little city to the little town to this um, place that I'm painting. And so you go past the Nakanicum uh, River, which is another native place name. Also, you'll find words around like Wapato, which is a kind of a potato, or Knikkinik, which is a um, an evergreen native um, plant that is sometimes smoked or the berries are eaten. There, I turned that and drug it down through the... It's a wonderful effect. I'm really enjoying that tool. Or you hear the word camas, which is a... Um, it's a plant. The blue camas is a... It's an... It's in the genus of plants that are the same as the asparagus family, actually. There, I'm just splashing um, clean water. Try to get some backgrounds and also to give some water so that I can do a little bit more blending and dragging. blends so great. I thought I'd let that dry a little bit. You'll notice in my videos there's a lot of breaks because I paint very slowly, much too slowly for anybody to be watching during the entire time because I stop and look at it and swish my colors and drink some coffee. It's a very slow process. But this is real time right here. And there you see how beautifully that blends. I believe this is some Payne's Gray with a bit of Pyrrhal Red, maybe some Opera Rose to get those yummy purple colors. I have 
to say, I think this painting has started very well. Maybe all that planning does pay off. Maybe Shirley Trevenna is right. <laughs> if you don't already know her, she's a major force in the watercolor world. She's, um, yeah, she's, she does this incredible work. So of course she knows what she's doing. I'm just being flippant. Ah, now this is an emery board. Usually someone might use this to, you know, make their nails nice and smooth, but I use it to shave a little bit of watercolor pencil and drop the little droplings onto some wet paint. Doesn't work if it's dry because you want it to stick down into the paint and it gives it a lovely texture that changes over time depending how wet your paint is. So if you drop it into very, very wet paint, you'll find one result. If you paint, if you drop it into paint that's dried partially, you'll find a different result. And it'll re, re react when you put fresh paint over it. You can use regular sandpaper, but I think emery boards, they just fit nicely into my pencil case. So I started using them and they're, they're I can use one for a long time, so. so I like that. When we were up there, at Cannon Beach, um, I'm always quite interested in, you know, the people who used to live there before the white people came. And so I found out that these um, these people, the Clatsop Indians, they they they're they're considered canoe people, and what that means is that they buried their dead in canoes together with the items that they would require in their next lives. I found that interesting. And then I also learned that they, um, they shape the foreheads of their babies to slope backwards. So they had a very distinctive um, shape, head shape. There's that blending, that wonderful blending. So here I'm trying to um, create the texture that would indicate, you know, trees on the top of this hill, which is what's there, with, of course, not drawing any trees. Just trying to do it with texture. That's about as abstract as I can get sometimes. Ah, and we're coming to the end. Thank you for watching today. Happy painting. Bye.